What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about graph searching algorithms. So we're going to briefly cover the basics, the very, very basics of graph theory, nothing too mathematical, nothing too complex, just the basic intuition, uh, because the subject of graph theory could fill a whole tutorial se a series in and of itself. Uh, but we're going to cover the basics here. And then we're going to look at two searching algorithms for graph theory. So let us get right into it. So let us start with the basics. A graph is essentially just a, you could say data structure or essentially just a structure consisting of so-called vertices and edges. So you have a vertex here, this is a vertex, and this here is an edge. And an edge typically connects to vertices. Um, in a simple graph, there is nothing such like an edge connecting a node or a vertex to itself. Um, so essentially, we're having vertices and edges and these vertices are connected by edges. And um, you can also have a graph consisting of subgraphs that are not connected. So for example, here, we would have a graph. And this is another graph. But if you say this whole thing is a graph, it's still one graph that is just not connected here. Uh, it's not interconnected. And you have many different properties that such a graph can have. For example, in this case here, we don't have any cycles, circles or whatever. Uh, if I close this here, we have a cycle. Uh, now it's an interconnected graph. Here we have another cycle. Uh, cycle doesn't have to be length three. You could also say this here is a cycle uh, or a circle. Actually, I think it's called cycle if you're having directions. If it's a directed graph, and it's called circle if you have none. Uh, if if it's a if it's an undirected graph. Um, However, as I said, we're not going to go too much into the details here, because the focus in this tutorial series is not teaching you graph theory and discussing the different properties of graphs, we're going to use graphs to apply algorithms onto them, because this is something that's very important. Um, and we're briefly going to cover the other properties that a graph can have, and then we're going to get right into the algorithms. Now, this here is a simple undirected graph. And if we add uh, directions to each connection here, it becomes a directed graph. Uh, so for example, this means that the connection is from this, let's say these are A, B, C, D, and so on. Uh, this means that we can go from B to C, but not from C to B, this is not possible. Uh, this is because it's directed, of course, we can have uh, a connection in both directions, this is not a problem. Um, but in, in, a, in a directed graph, we always have a direction for each edge, we don't just say these are connected, because in an undirected graph, I can go from B to C from C to B, and so on. And in and uh, in a directed graph, this is not the case. Uh, so another property that we can have is um, having a weighted so called weighted graph. So in this case here, if this is A, and this is B, and this is C, going from A to B is equally efficient as going from A to C, because we don't have any weights here. Now, if I go ahead and say, okay, let's say this here, this connection here has the weight two, and this connection here has the weight eight, for example, this changes. Now it's not equally efficient to go from A to C, uh, as it is to go from A to B. And we define what efficiency means for us. For example, if we're talking about uh, these numbers, meaning how um, hard it is to get to, uh, to the point or how much effort we need to do uh, to take or how much, uh, I don't know, uh, kilometers we need to go un until we get there, we would want to minimize the numbers. So from A to C, we could say these are two kilometers and th these are eight kilometers, right? So going from A to C is definitely more efficient than going from A to B. However, if we say these numbers are how much money you can get on the way or how much value you can get from A to B or from A to C, we want to maximize the number. So we define what efficient is if we are talking about uh, something that we want to keep small, like distance, we're talking about uh, smaller numbers being more efficient, smaller weights being more efficient. And if we're talking about larger numbers, um, something that we want to maximize, for example, money value, or people to talk with clients to see uh, while going from A to B something like that, uh, we definitely want to maximize these numbers. So this is one property that we can have. And one thing that's worthwhile to mention, or worth mentioning uh, is that if you don't have any cycles, if we don't have any circle cycles in 
a graph, it is called a tree. So if you have something like that, um, where essentially it goes on and on and on, and you don't have any cycles, which means you don't connect something, you cannot just go uh, full circle here. This is called a tree. Now this also looks like a typical tree. Uh, but for example, this year would also be a tree. Just this would actually even be a path because a path is uh, when you always only have one direction to go to, but now it would be a tree. Um, now it would also be a tree because you can always pick a root node and then it's just a tree, you know, like binary trees. We're going to talk about these data structures, but essentially uh, these are the basics that you need to know about graph theory. And now we're going to get into the searching algorithms. So let us start with the so called breadth first search, which is BFS. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to pronounce for a non native speaker. Uh, but essentially, what we're doing here is we're preferring breadth over depth. So breadth over depth, which means that when we're traversing uh, this graph here, the sample graph that I prepared here, um, we're going to prefer this over that. And uh, this means that the order of how we're going to discover the notes uh, is a different one. So for example, let's say a is our starting point, what we can do to now go ahead and find all these other notes is we could just go ahead and you know, try to go to the edges or to to these outer notes here. And then, you know, sooner or later, we would return to uh, we would have all notes covered, we could go ahead and just do anything. Uh, but essentially, we want to have a structure in finding or traversing through the graph, finding all the other nodes. And what we can do with the BFS is essentially, we're looking at all the neighbors first, and then the neighbors of the neighbors before we go any deeper into the graph. So what we can do, of course, is we can start a go to B and then instead of going to the next node that's connected to C, we could also go to D or E or whatever. But in BFS, what we do is we first look at all the neighbors at level one, layer one, then we look at layer two, and so on. So when we start at A, what we're doing here is we're looking at the neighbors, which is B and C. So we mark these, let me pick another color here, we mark these as the neighbors now. So these are the selections, these are the two neighbors of our starting node. And then we process these. So we go to B, we have now found B, then we mark the, the neighbors of B, which is D and E, but we still have C, which is the neighbor of A. So we prefer this one first, we discover C, then we mark its neighbor G, then we go ahead, uh, we, we go back to B, its neighbor was D and E, so we cover D, D's neighbor is E, which is already selected, then we go to E, discover E, then we go back instead of going to F, we go to G because or actually we need to mark F as a neighbor from uh, of E. And now instead of processing or discovering F, we go to G, discover G and then to F. This is one way in which you could do it in a breadth first search. So we're always looking at the layers. So look, this is this is the layer zero, so to say, then we have these two connections here. These two nodes are the first layer. And then we have all these connections here. And these are the third layer. So we process those first. And then we have this connection here. And this is the last layer, the fourth layer, or did I say yeah, it's, it's zero, one, two, okay, actually three. So this is the third layer. And this is what BFS basically does. So now let's talk about the opposite or alternative approach here, which is the depth first search the DFS, as you can see here, and the DFS is essentially the opposite thing. So we start at a certain starting point, And instead of looking at the neighbors first, we go as deep as possible. Now, of course, uh, in order to get going in order to to start the process, we need to pick a neighbor of a because we cannot just go to H, for example, because it's not connected. Uh, but instead of going to B and C, we just pick one of them, for example, B. And now we're not going to process the next neighbor of C, but we're going to go as deep as possible before we get back to C. So what we do is we go to B and then we pick, for example, D. There's not just one right way. There are many ways you could also go ahead and pick E, for example. So we have A, B, D. And then the next thing that we do is, of course, because we only have one chance, uh, not, not chance, but one, uh, one option here, we go to E. And then from E, we can either go back to a neighbor of A or deeper into the graph, so to say, and we're going to F, of course, now we have no options left. So we recursively go back, this is like, uh, you know, going out of a recursion, basically returning. So we're going back to E, 
And you can see, okay, from E, I can access C. Then from C, you know, I can either pick G or H, doesn't matter, let's pick G. And then I pick H. And then you can go back and see, okay, I came from G, go back, no options, no options, no options, uh, and so on. We could, we would recursively go back until we reach the starting point A. And this is the depth first search. And by the way, because I didn't mention it for the BFS, uh, the BFS and the DFS have a runtime complexity that is referred to as big O of V plus E, which means that it's not only depending on um, on the vertices, because that would be a little bit uh, a little bit uh, irrational here, because we can have, for example, I don't know, five vertices, and they could be connected like that, or they could be connected like that. So the amount of edges is definitely important when it comes to uh, to the runtime complexity of this algorithm or of those algorithms. So uh, the runtime complexity is depending on vertices and edges, and the amount of edges can vary uh, radically because you know if you have a thousand nodes, you can have uh, a very high amount of edges, a very a very large amount of edges, or a very small amount of edges. So this is the runtime complexity. We're not going to analyze the whole code here because uh, we did this with sorting algorithms already. You should now know how to al analyze algorithms. But essentially, the breadth first search and the depth first search uh, have a runtime complexity of V plus E, so vertices plus edges, uh, whereas this is the amount of vertices and the amount of edges, of course. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.